So imagine a cube six miles across deep and high, and that's how much lava came out. Nestled in the heart of America, Yellowstone National Park has long captivated our imagination and remains a symbol of the untamed beauty that Earth has to offer. But for the first time in over three decades, this crown jewel of the United States National Park System has been sealed off from the world. The question on everyone's mind, what could possibly be the cause of such an extreme measure? Recently, world-renowned astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson has made some of the most shocking statements since the closure of the iconic park was announced. According to Tyson, what we are witnessing is more than a temporary closure. Rather, Yellowstone National Park is experiencing something far more profound, as many secrets are lurking beneath the iconic park that has welcomed millions of visitors over the years. But what could these secrets be? Could the fate of our planet be hanging in the balance? Join us as we embark on this mind-bending journey and uncover what's really going on at Yellowstone. Nestled in the heart of the majestic Rocky Mountains, Yellowstone National Park spans an expansive territory of over 2.2 million acres, reaching across the borders of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. Within this vast expanse of wilderness lies a treasure trove of natural wonders that have captivated the imagination of millions of people for generations. It is a place where the forces of the earth come to life, painting a vibrant landscape of geothermal marvels. One cannot help but be captivated by the sheer magnitude of Yellowstone's geothermal features. More than 10,000 geysers, hot springs, mud pots, and fumaroles dot the landscape creating an otherworldly display of bubbling pools and erupting geysers. Among these geothermal wonders, the renowned Old Faithful Geyser stands tall as the ultimate symbol of nature's incredible power. With unwavering predictability, Old Faithful shoots scalding hot water and steam into the air, soaring to heights that always leave visitors in awe. But the park's wonders don't end there. Yellowstone is also home to the breathtaking Grand Canyon of Yellowstone, carved by the powerful Yellowstone River. This awe-inspiring canyon boasts majestic cliffs painted in vibrant yellow and orange hues. The lower and upper falls within the canyon provide mesmerizing viewpoints, offering unforgettable vistas. And adding to the park's allure is Yellowstone Lake, the largest high-elevation lake in North America, spanning over 130 square miles. Visitors can indulge in activities such as boating, fishing, and scenic drives along the captivating shoreline. However, while Yellowstone may appear idyllic and serene, a sense of terror lurks beneath its surface, the Yellowstone supervolcano. This massive volcano is classified as a caldera, a colossal volcanic crater formed by the collapse of a volcano after a massive eruption. The dimensions of this volcanic system are staggering, with a diameter spanning approximately 45 miles. Long ago, millions of years in the past, there were massive volcanic eruptions that rocked the Earth. These eruptions were so powerful that they expelled enormous amounts of volcanic material. The sheer force of these explosions caused the volcano to collapse in on itself, creating a spectacular natural feature called a caldera. The volcano we see today is actually just the remnants left behind after this initial cataclysmic event. Although it appears terrifying, it is merely a residue of the ancient eruption that shook Yellowstone. What makes this supervolcano unique is its ongoing geothermal activity. As you explore the park, you will encounter a mesmerizing landscape filled with hot springs, geysers, mud pots, and fumaroles. These steam vents release gases from deep within the earth, all thanks to the supervolcano's underlying heat and geological activity. One of the most famous geysers, Old Faithful, erupts with astonishing regularity, shooting scalding hot water and steam into the air, sometimes reaching heights of over 100 feet. Even though the last colossal eruption from the Yellowstone supervolcano occurred roughly 640,000 years ago, the region is far from being dormant. It buzzes with constant activity in the form of small earthquakes, geothermal heat, and sporadically erupting geysers. Thousands of small earthquakes are recorded yearly in the area surrounding the supervolcano, indicating the continuous movement of molten rock, or magma, deep beneath the surface. It's as if the Earth itself is trying to warn us, signaling that the danger may lie beneath the calm exterior. 
However, this state of activity won't last forever. Scientists conducting research on Yellowstone take these warnings seriously and employ advanced monitoring systems to study the supervolcano. These sophisticated methods allow them to gather crucial data about the behavior of Yellowstone and its potential for future eruptions. One of the techniques used is the deployment of seismometers. These instruments measure and record ground vibrations caused by seismic waves. Yellowstone has a network of seismometers strategically placed throughout the park and its surroundings. They can detect even the slightest earthquakes and ground tremors associated with volcanic activity. By analyzing the seismic data, scientists can determine earthquakes' location, depth, and magnitude. This information helps them understand the movement of magma and the potential volcanic processes at play. Scientists utilize instruments equipped with Global Positioning System technology to monitor ground deformation. These instruments precisely measure and track even the subtlest changes in the Earth's surface position. By comparing repeated measurements over time, scientists can detect shifts or alterations in the landscape, indicating possible volcanic activity. The GPS data provides valuable insights into the movement of magma beneath the surface, aiding scientists in identifying patterns and trends that could serve as precursors to eruptions, potentially allowing preventive measures to be taken. In addition to seismic and deformation monitoring, gas monitoring stations are strategically positioned within Yellowstone National Park. These stations measure and analyze the composition and emission rates of gases released by the supervolcano. Scientists further understand the volcanic processes and potential volcanic activity by studying the gases emitted. Through these advanced monitoring systems, scientists can closely observe and gather information about the complex dynamics of Yellowstone. This knowledge helps them assess the risks and take necessary actions to mitigate potential hazards posed by the supervolcano. Volcanic gases, such as sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide, play a crucial role in understanding the underlying volcanic processes. Changes in gas emissions can provide important clues about the movement and interaction of magma with the surrounding rocks and fluids. Researchers are the first to know if there are any significant deviations from baseline levels or signs of increased volcanic activity. Scientists comprehensively understand how the Yellowstone supervolcano behaves by monitoring gas emissions alongside other methods. Data collected from seismometers, GPS instruments, and gas monitoring stations are constantly analyzed and combined. This integration allows scientists to detect any anomalies or patterns that might indicate a significant change in volcanic activity. By studying these data, scientists can gain insights into the complex processes happening beneath the Earth's surface and potentially forecast or provide advanced warning of any potential volcanic events. Volcanic systems are incredibly intricate and numerous factors can influence volcanic behavior. Therefore, the continuous monitoring efforts and data collection contribute to ongoing research, enhancing scientists' understanding of the dynamics of the Yellowstone supervolcano. Without these efforts, we would all be sitting on a ticking time bomb, unaware of what is happening right beneath our feet. In an episode of the Star Talk podcast, astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson and volcanologist Janine Krippner delved into the potential eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano, shedding light on its unique characteristics. They described a supervolcano as one that has experienced a significant eruption in the past. They emphasized that most volcanic eruptions are smaller in scale compared to super eruptions, which differentiate supervolcanoes with their magnitude and impact. Super eruptions are classified as VEI-8 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, indicating their extraordinary explosiveness and the massive volume of magma involved. The conversation between Tyson and Krippner added a fascinating perspective to the discussion surrounding Yellowstone's volcanic activity, captivating listeners with intriguing details. The Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI, is a scale used by scientists to measure and classify the explosiveness of volcanic eruptions. It provides a standardized way to compare eruptions based on factors like the height of the eruption cloud, the volume of material expelled, and the duration of the eruption. The scale ranges from 0 to 8, with higher numbers indicating more violent and catastrophic eruptions. Each level on the VEI scale corresponds to specific eruption characteristics, helping scientists estimate the intensity and impact of an eruption. 
To determine the VEI level, scientists consider factors such as the height of the eruption column, the volume of solid volcanic material or tephra ejected, and the duration of the eruption. These parameters are assessed through field observations, satellite imagery, and the analysis of deposits left behind by past eruptions. At the lower end of the scale, VEI 0 to 2 eruptions are relatively small and localized. They have limited impacts beyond the immediate vicinity of the volcano. These eruptions typically produce low ash plumes and release a relatively small volume of volcanic material. As the VEI level increases to 3 or 4, eruptions become more explosive. They can generate taller eruption columns, increasing the volume of erupted material. This escalation in explosivity can lead to the formation of pyroclastic flows, which are fast-moving avalanches of hot ash, gases, and rock fragments. Understanding the VEI scale helps scientists assess volcanic eruptions' potential hazards and impacts. By analyzing eruption characteristics and historical data, they can better prepare and provide warnings to communities at risk. When volcanic eruptions reach higher levels on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, they can have significant regional impacts, affecting air travel, agriculture, and local communities. Once the VEI level reaches 5, eruptions are considered large, producing substantial ash plumes and distributing volcanic material over a wide area. This can disrupt transportation, infrastructure, and the environment beyond the immediate vicinity of the volcano. The impacts can be far-reaching, causing disruptions to daily life and posing challenges to affected communities. However, it is at the highest end of the VEI scale, levels 6 to 8, where super eruptions occur. These events are incredibly rare and catastrophic. Super eruptions are characterized by colossal eruption columns that can reach the stratosphere, propelling massive volumes of erupted material into the atmosphere. Super eruptions effects can be global, influencing climate patterns, and causing significant environmental and societal consequences. Such eruptions have the potential to reshape landscapes and impact civilizations on a large scale. The Volcanic Explosivity Index plays a vital role in categorizing and comparing volcanic eruptions based on their explosiveness. It helps scientists estimate volcanic activities' potential hazards and impacts, enabling better preparedness, hazard assessment, and mitigation strategies in volcanic regions worldwide. Scientists and communities can work together to minimize the risks associated with these natural phenomena by understanding the magnitude and severity of volcanic eruptions. In their discussion, Neil deGrasse Tyson and Janine Krippner emphasized the immense challenge of accumulating a massive amount of magma in a single location, which is a critical factor in triggering a super eruption. They highlighted that this process is complex and time-consuming, requiring the gradual buildup of magma beneath the Earth's surface over an extended period. The accumulation of magma in a concentrated reservoir sets the stage for potential super eruptions. Drawing upon their expertise, Tyson and Krippner shared an important observation about the magma composition beneath Yellowstone. They explained that a higher proportion of liquid magma is necessary for an eruption to occur. Their analysis indicated that a minimum threshold of 30% liquid magma is required to create the conditions conducive to an eruption. Interestingly, they noted that Yellowstone already contains over half of that required amount, suggesting that the possibility of an eruption may be closer than anticipated. The potential for a super eruption at Yellowstone raises concerns that the consequences could be devastating, affecting not just the immediate surroundings, but potentially impacting a vast area if such an event were to occur. During super eruptions, enormous amounts of volcanic ash are unleashed, shooting high into the atmosphere and reaching astonishing heights of up to 80 miles. These ash particles disperse over vast distances, causing significant consequences for global climate patterns. When volcanic ash is injected into the upper atmosphere during a super eruption, it engages in complex interactions with air currents and weather systems. These minuscule ash particles can remain suspended in the air for long, carried across extensive regions and continents by prevailing wind patterns. As the ash spreads throughout the atmosphere, it forms a dense cloud that absorbs and scatters sunlight, resulting in a phenomenon known as volcanic winter. This dense volcanic ash cloud greatly diminishes the amount of sunlight that reaches the Earth's surface. The decrease in solar radiation has profound effects on the planet's temperature and weather patterns. 
The ash particles act as a barrier, reflecting incoming sunlight into space and temporarily cooling the Earth's surface. This cooling effect can lead to alterations in rainfall patterns, changes in wind patterns, and disruptions to both regional and global climates. The consequences of such global cooling can be extensive. Agriculture and food production may be affected due to shifts in growing seasons and reduced crop yields. Ecosystems may experience disturbances as species struggle to adapt to altered conditions. In addition, the cooling effect of volcanic ash can have an impact on human societies, potentially giving rise to economic challenges, scarcity of resources, and social upheaval. Historical records provide evidence of the significant climate impact of past supereruptions. For instance, the eruption of Mount Tambora in 1815, considered one of the most powerful volcanic events in recorded history, led to the year without a summer in 1816. The widespread dispersion of volcanic ash caused abnormally cold temperatures, failed harvests, and social unrest across numerous parts of the Northern Hemisphere. But wait, there's more. The experts delved into the disruptive effects of volcanic ash on air travel, highlighting the hazards it poses to aircraft engines and flight operations. They emphasize the dangers of flying through volcanic ash, as these tiny abrasive particles can cause severe damage to engine components and impair visibility. This presents a significant risk to aviation safety, underscoring the criticality of monitoring volcanic activity and issuing appropriate flight advisories during eruptions. Neil deGrasse Tyson and Janine Krippner shed light on the indispensable role of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory and other organizations in actively monitoring the activity of the Yellowstone supervolcano. They emphasized the importance of a comprehensive monitoring system that detects and analyzes various indicators of volcanic unrest, providing vital information for scientific research and public safety. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, a collaborative effort between the United States Geological Survey, the University of Utah, and the National Park Service, serves as the backbone of monitoring and studying the Yellowstone supervolcano. This collective partnership brings together the expertise and resources of these organizations, ensuring effective surveillance and in-depth examination of the Yellowstone supervolcano. It's a collaborative scientific endeavor dedicated to safeguarding lives and enhancing our understanding of this awe-inspiring natural phenomenon. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory utilizes diverse monitoring techniques to monitor the supervolcano's activity closely. These methods include measuring ground deformations, analyzing satellite imagery, and monitoring thermal changes. By employing these approaches, scientists can track alterations in the shape and movement of the Earth's surface, identify areas of heat and thermal anomalies, and gain additional insights into the dynamic behavior of the supervolcano. They must be diligent and accurate in their work, as any missteps could have serious consequences. It's worth noting that large flood basalt volcanoes, which occur over millions of years, differ in super eruptions in terms of their scale and lava type. These volcanic events involve the eruption of vast quantities of runny lava that can spread across expansive areas, creating massive volcanic plateaus. While flood basalt eruptions can have enduring impacts on regional environments, they are distinct from the explosive nature and global consequences of super eruptions. It's important to approach the media's portrayal of the risks associated with Yellowstone's eruption with caution, as they often tend to exaggerate the potential dangers. Instead, Relying on accurate scientific information and assessments provided by volcanologists and authoritative sources is advisable. Given the international collaboration and involvement of the scientific community in monitoring Yellowstone, the notion of government secrecy when it comes to imminent eruptions is highly unlikely. The scientific community is committed to sharing information and ensuring public safety, as they understand the importance of transparency and the dissemination of reliable knowledge. When it comes to the potential eruption of the Yellowstone volcano, the park authorities play a crucial role in ensuring public safety. If they decide to close down the park, it indicates that the situation has become quite serious and requires everyone's attention. This action signifies that experts closely monitor the volcano's behavior and take necessary precautions. As for the question of whether we will be able to anticipate the eruption or if it will bring about the destruction of the entire Earth, it's a matter that requires patience and ongoing observation. 
Scientists and researchers dedicated to studying volcanoes are continuously working to understand the signs and patterns that precede volcanic eruptions. While they have made significant progress in monitoring and predicting volcanic activity, an eruption's exact timing and magnitude can still be challenging to determine with absolute certainty. Nature often keeps its secrets hidden until the right moment. Therefore, we must wait patiently and trust in the expertise and vigilance of the scientific community. Their relentless efforts to monitor the Yellowstone volcano combined with advancements in technology and data analysis, improve our understanding of volcanic processes and enhance our ability to detect potential volcanic events. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.